Good afternoon fellow hobbyists, it's Paul here at Basti Games. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Foundry paint system in comparison to some of the other major paint brands that you may come across or use. I have recently invested in the Foundry system for the purposes of our great game Black Powder project which you can check out on our YouTube channel Dating With History. I've invested in 25 of their paints in the range and today I'm going to get a good thorough look at the system and really how it's going to break down. I suppose I'm going to start off looking at foundry paints in terms of what you get in the tub um, price and I'm going to compare that to some of the other major brands which I use. So we're going to be looking at the comparison to GW's contrast range, the Citadel just the Citadel range itself, Vallejo and Army Painter. So we're going to get a look at each of them. We'll move on to take a look at the process involved with each of those systems, time it takes and I suppose what they're best suited to in terms of different types of games, specifically trying to pull them back to historicals. Uh, I'm then going to take a look at and show you a comparison of the paints on the palette, so just basically the, the sort of consistency of the different paints and the colours. Um, and finally we'll wrap it up with a little test run of foundry paints going on and how they look, what way they work actually going on to a model. So without further ado guys, uh, you can see I have a range of the paints here. So we have our model colour from Vallejo, we have our army painter, we have our G-Dub contrast, we have our GW traditional and we have our new foundry stuff, which is British Royal Blue 74A. If you have a look on the screen guys you will see the comparison chart which I've drawn up so it looks at the size of each of these different tubs or bottles their retail price and then I've broke that down as a price per milliliter sometimes I think it can be confusing foundry gets a reputation for being an expensive system however when you look at the size of the tubs it's a whacking 20 mil tub that actually breaks down sort of mid-range, so it's about 18 pence per milliliter on that stuff. And you can see from the chart, guys, GW Contrast is not going out at the dearest, uh, followed closely by Citadel, found out their mid-range, and then Vallejo, and right down into your army painter. However, really worth noting at the bottom of the page there, guys, Foundry paints retail at £3.50 each. They're only available for more games Foundry um, that I know of. Can't find them anywhere else. Any other third-party retailer doing them. If you buy them in the trio... It actually, there's a, there's a deal on each of the trios, so you'll see here, for example, in the chestnut range from Foundry, they come in three different shades, complementing shades. So there's chestnut A, B and C, which I use for horses. Uh, you get the three paints in at that point for £8, which is a fantastic deal, and then works out really as almost the cheapest out there. So it's really worth having a look at this system, guys, and look at... The different paints that they do offer. I've chucked on another column there guys for online retailers because I'm aware obviously we have the likes of our Goblin Games, Element Games, uh, various other online retailers which offer discount on the RRP so when you look at that in the table again Foundry don't tend to have any discount on the stuff it's just available from their site still sitting there mid-range with the GW stuff and the Vallejo stuff much of a muchness uh, in terms of price even with those discounts so it's, it ranges from anywhere between 10 to 20 25 percent depending on where you look so that's really where they're at in terms of comparisons guys the process involved which you'll see on the screen um i've actually broke down into two different categories so the first one is really looking at the process so with foundry we've got a base and a, a one slash two layer system which we'll talk about and show you the Vallejo stuff is, is your basic base colour, followed by a wash to, to bring out those shadows and then a highlight colour. And that follows the same process for Army Painter and Citadel. GW Contrast itself is marketed as a one coat system. So in terms of time, guys, uh, on a real high level overview, Foundry, if you use the full three layer system, because there's no wash involved, which we'll, we'll come to look at, it can be quite time consuming using the paints however uh, if we break up the layering system from instead of using all three shades using two different shades uh, I reckon it can be sort of joint second there with 
the Citadel Vallejo and Army Painter paints. GW Contrast is obviously the fastest, it's a one coat system, uh, but we'll get to that in due course. In terms of actual results of these paints, with specifically to historical games, uh, I think I'm going to leave that to the last uh, and give my opinions. And I hope to hear yours too, from both guys that have used the Foundry system, used any of these different paint systems, and indeed anybody thinking about picking them up, feel free to pop your questions into the comments or hook us up on Facebook at Flags and Eagles, guys. So, without any further ado, I'm going to have a look at how these different paints look out of the tub. So guys, let's get a look at these paints as they come out. So I'm going to start with the blues. These are the range of blues that I have used um, for both British and French troops, uh, Napoleonics that is. Uh, and you're going to see, I suppose, the differences in, in the paints themselves. So I'm going to start with the foundry. The tub guys itself is a flip top. Much like GW is only um, slightly more cylindrical and a lot smaller little lip on the inside. And one thing to note guys is these paints are quite thin. So they're acrylic water based paints. They do need a good shake. I'm going to invest in some uh, bearings or paint shakers to put in these. So before you use it guys, be warned, give it a good shake. So I'm going to give it a good rattle there to agitate up the colour. And we'll get a look at the paint. So what you notice with the brush guys is the paint is quite thin but it is Royal British Blue, shade 74A, so it is almost a perfect colour, if not a perfect colour match for what we're looking at in terms of Napoleonics anyway guys. Interesting tip bit about the foundry system. A lot of the range is actually specific for certain periods, so the, this British Royal Blue uh, is made specifically for Napoleonics. They have a whole sort of range of World War II specific colours, um, you know, there, there's a stack guys, we'll give you a look at the actual the range of paints towards the end, but there's a huge range that actually are very very specific and tie in to periods of history. So GW next guys, I've been using their Contour Blue. This I was using this paint before I'd actually invested in any of the other systems. So interesting, this is where it all began. Now GW, as some of you may know, a lot thicker guys. So we'll see when that goes on. Paint is a lot thicker, uh, which is why even some of their most prolific painters and online tutorial guys do tell you to use two thin coats joy of foundry is that you don't need to thin the paint you can apply your two thin coats without having to actually touch the paint so it does tend to be a little bit faster if you are a more high-end uh, top-end painter so Vallejo's dark Prussian blue which I have used again on some of my French and some of my British now it is not a flip top it is a bottle a lot of people swear by these uh, I'll get to my opinions on those in a little minute so I'm just going to put a drop of that out. One good thing, I suppose, with the dropper bottle is it's much easier to wipe down after use. The paint, the GW and Vallejo paints do tend to have, I'll actually just show you. So with repeated use you will find a lot of paint does clog down in the back these will need cleaned out regularly or your paint will dry up foundry again one little gripe is that flipper system i'm not a big fan of it but what you get is a bit of spillage down the back uh, if you're not not careful and again it will clog the lid so you need to just be wary of that guys when you're doing this but the prussian blue anyway to come back you see army painter or sorry vallejo Again, that's a very, very vibrant blue. Um, so it does tend to need to be killed with a, a dark tone wash or a dark blue wash afterwards. We have the Army Painter Blue Tone. Quite interesting. This is an ink, so it works a similar way to your contrast. Again, same type of bottle. So you can paint on with this stuff straight over a white undercoat or 
you can if you wish use it as a wash over the likes of our Leo Blue or GW Blue and last but not least GW's Contrast Leviadon Blue there we can see it's a much deeper, richer, it's almost a purple and blue so guys you can see the range how I mean for, for a similar process or a similar model how these can all really vary quite a bit just let me have a closer look at them there so that's I suppose what we're looking at um, obviously out of all these is a base coat I have to say for Napoleonics um, I'm a big fan of the actual foundry paint and the Vallejo uh, or sorry the GW Cantor Blue so they're both really nice and I have used them you'll see a model show at the end guys of these different types of paint but that's how they look guys um, the reason I've left out these reds is for a specific purpose because with Napoleonics everybody is chasing that perfect red coat um, so I've picked up, they, they do do the 68 range from Foundry, which is 68 A, B and C, is a British red coat system in itself, so I'll just pop them out. Now, you'll notice here that I've only picked up the B and C, there is a reason for that, um, the base layer for it, so the Foundry system is three layers guys basically, but I've picked up Scarlet 38 A, this was on advice from Colin over at Colin's Paint Studio. Uh, if you don't know him, check out his stuff on Facebook. But his advice was to use this Scarlet because it's a much better foundation colour for the red coats. Uh, and he works extensively with this system. So I took that on board and I've picked this system up. Now, how it works, we're actually going to do a British Heavy, uh, British Heavy Cavalryman very soon. Just to show you how the system works and how it differs in process from what your traditional paint style is. Your base coat your wash and then your highlight so it is different than that uh, and it can be quite tricky to get used to but i suppose to give you a look at the differences in the reds so this scarlet it's a real gain that vallejo texture or sorry not that vallejo texture that foundry texture can be quite hard to get used to if you're not used to Thin the paints. Was that red was what I was using as a base colour before I got the foundry stuff. Uh, again, I'll show you some of the models that I've actually done with that, and you can decide yourself what you think. Burnt red from Vallejo. What are my gripes guys, although I don't like the clockage on the back of the Citadel and Foundry tubs, you do tend to get more out of them because with the dropper bottle you tend to not be able to gauge too well how much paint you need to put out, so a lot of that can go to waste, unfortunately. And there's it, they were red, and then finally I have done some red coats in contrast just to give it a go. Um, and I'll show you pictures of those at the end. Uh, again, you can make your own judgments, guys. It's up to you what way you like your stuff to like. I'm just talking about, I suppose, what way I enjoy mine. Now, it's a very vibrant red, as you'll see. We'll just take a closer look. So we have Foundry here. GW was Daga red. Burnt red from Vallejo and Blood Angels Red Contrast on the end there guys so you can decide yourself which of those colours you like I'm going to show you now how we apply the foundry paints and I'm going to be using a First Royal Dragoon from Warlord Games we're just going to be popping on his red coat show you how the process works sort of time it takes and then we'll take a look at different models I've painted it with all of these different ranges. And you can decide what you think. I'll give my advice on, on what I think and what I think looks best. 
But again, ultimately, guys, feel free to drop your comments below. Okay, everyone, let's get a look at the foundry system in action. So I'm going to be starting with a British Union Brigade Heavy Cavalryman from Warlord. And we're going to start by applying the base coat. So how does foundry work, guys? It's a three-tiered system with no wash. So you have three complementing colours in a range. They are generally numbered in order. So, for example, the British Red Coat system is series 68, and it's got an A, a B, and a C. A is your darkest colour, followed by B, and then C, slightly light, lighter tones uh, in succession. As I mentioned earlier, guys, I'm using the Scarlet base coat. Typically, uh, you'll see that, like of our chestnut, it starts with an A, then a B, and then a C, but the on advice from Colin at Colin's Paint Studio, we're using the Scarlet, but it's not atypical of the system. Usually they all complement. So, good shake again, and we want to apply the paint. Now, the paint is quite thin, and it actually flows onto the model quite nicely. So, at this early stage, guys, I tend not to be super careful uh, when I'm applying the base coat, because I tidy up all the details later on. And you can see just how easy this paint does go on. Because it is quite thin, it tends to stretch nicely. And you'll see just how quick that's actually going on there. At this point, guys, don't worry too much if you hit uh, bits of your piping and your straps, because it's all easily fixed as we start to work our way through the rest of the model. See, it's just a real joy to work with, guys. Um, if you give this wee system a try, you'll see just how nice the paint flows. So I'm going to bash on ahead here and knock out the rest of this coat. Don't forget the tails on your heavies down here. Again, they will have a turn back colour, which with the dragoons I believe is blue. Uh, but just do the whole thing in red and then we can go over it with the blue at a later point. So I'm going to bash on ahead guys and do that bit. Okay guys, so we have now undercoated the entirety of the model with our red. Now, if you aren't happy with the first coat, you can come back and hit it with the second coat. I have done that in this instance. With the second coat, guys, you only need to really touch the bits where you're still seeing the black undercoat coming through. So you can do it if you want. It's probably advisable to do it that way, uh, but you don't have to if you don't particularly want to. So usually at this stage, guys, in, a, in the painting process with a base coat, we would be applying a wash. However, foundry is a totally different system. So really, this base coat is essentially your wash, so let's give you the dark shadowy under colour. So the second step is a highlight that you would usually put over a wash. So we're going to use Red Coat 68B, this nice red coat colour, give that a shake up. Now, when applying the highlights with foundry guys, you're not wanting to follow every shadow super carefully the way you maybe would with a traditional highlight because it just tends to lose the depth of colour and you lose that undercoat completely almost so you really want to apply in nice broad heavy strokes to where the light would catch on the model so that is the tricky part of the system but you do get used to it so using our 68B you'll see here the lines on the sleeves usually I would be following an M really quite carefully, traditionally, but in this instance, the paint is thinned, so you can afford nice big broad strokes, just catching where the light would be. So you can see there guys how that, how that goes on. That can be hard for some painters to get used to, I know I found it tricky at the start. But it does give a really nice result at the end. So as you can see guys, nice broad strokes. 
A lot of guys when they are highlighting or blending or wet blending will thin their paints anyway. So that's the foundry system has really given you that benefit. But you don't just have to be as careful with the application. You want to just catch those high parts. And you can see how quick guys this process can be once you get used to it. So we're going to zoom around the rest of this model and then we'll look at the final stages with Foundry. Okay everyone, here we go, final stages. We have this model which has been stage A and B and you can see where the light catching the, the coat has been picked up with the, the British Red Coat 68B. We're now going to move to 68C, which is almost orangey. Now, this highlight, guys, you want to be quite sparing with. It's to catch the highest points and add a real ping to the model. So I'm looking for the highest points. And you can see I'm just dabbing that on, guys, where I feel the light touches the model. Just work our way around, hitting all the right areas. Again, this is nowhere near as precise as you would need to be with a traditional highlight, but it just seems to be the way the system is designed. So you will still see, guys, there is little bits of that scarlet from our initial stage, just pushing through. And there we have it guys, a completed British Cavalry red coat. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial and review and comparison of the Foundry paint system against some of the other manufacturers. Um, you'll see in front of you some of the models that I have been painting in various styles. I've also got a commission job here from Collins Paint Studio who uses the Foundry system exclusively. I'm going to give you a little model show reel to show the differences in the system side by side but I suppose guys just to, to wrap up on screen you'll see that when we come back to looking at a lot of people invest in the paint system because they want a one size fits all and that's fair enough if so um, I would suggest um, on balance in my own experience that Vallejo will allow you to paint both your sci-fi and fantasy miniatures as well as your historical so you'll get a good palette for both types of game uh, if you're looking for one system that fits all and looking to get the best value of your stuff for purely historicals guys I think hands down uh, Foundry are going to come in in first place because they these colours are designed specifically for uh, different areas of history uh, and you'll see that from some of the pictures for Napoleonics I don't think I could could drift outside of it um, again having now picked it up and tried it yes I'll still use some of the Vallejo colours still use some of the GW colours uh, and I've actually used a mix of both systems so you'll see in again the pictures with my horses I've used maybe a foundry base colour so the, an, a, an A series uh, and then used a Citadel colour to highlight because it's just a really really good colour uh, but we'll have a look at that guys I'm going to touch on that in later videos so I hope you've enjoyed guys um, please give us a subscribe uh, it really pushes us on, helps us get some content out there, gives us a share, like on Facebook, we're at Flags and Eagles, and Dyson with History on YouTube. So enjoy the model, guys, and I will catch you again very soon.